Hey, this is Notzer, and we're checking out another Pan-Asian Destroyer. This is the Tier 8, Sinyang. It's of Taiwanese origin, and prior to that, American, so it has 127mm guns with deep water torpedoes. I can equip radar, which I have, and this is a gun-focused build. Now I move forward, and oh, I did not expect to run into two DDs. You always find these Japanese destroyer players. They always like to just sail around the objective, not actually go for it and completely ambush you. Well, probably didn't expect radar. So why did I do a radar gun build? Because I wanted to see if it works. You've got smoke guns, which makes perfect sense. You know, you sit in your smoke and you spam the crap out of your guns. You've got a torpedo radar build. 90% of the time, you're just stealthing around, detecting the target for your teammates to engage. But in general, you can't really contribute to actually killing a target. And then this build is a little bit of both. I won't be able to fire freely from my smoke. Now, I could take over the enemy smoke by killing them. And that's what happened in that player. If you run into a situation, just like if you're going up against a Soviet cruiser, commit to staying in the smoke. He's not going to be able to kill you unless he has some crazy super container module, and he probably does on his Moskva because clan war. But if you run into a Missouri Soviet cruiser's they most likely can't kill you in your smoke, and it will be completely used up by the time they get close to killing. Now you could you could go a little bit back and forth to throw off their shot, but don't leave the smoke. That was the mistake that player made. Instead of running away, oh god, I'm detecting. Just stay there. Stay hidden in smoke. When radar's done, you'll be fine. And these Pan Asians, you're gonna have to run into that more often. And that is the solution. It's 20 seconds. That's probably even shorter at tier 8. So a DD cannot kill another DD in 20 seconds without torpedoes, of course. And I can't use torpedoes because of deep water. So team captured this point. I'm moving forward. There was a Shimakaze that we did detect by radar. He did pull back. But our radar is basically up. And my intention is to move forward and maybe try and get a deep water torpedo in position. But holy crap! This guy has some big set of balls because he moved forward very quickly and he ran smack dab into me. So right now, I don't need to use radar. He hasn't fired his guns. The only time I should use radar is when I know he is outside of my detection, which he clearly dropped off, and this is going to keep him detected. My teammates should be able to follow up and kill him, and that's exactly what happens. That is another technique that you must be careful of. 7.5 kilometer range. If you happen to be body spotted, you will stay the full duration spotted with radar because when, when you try and escape, they will turn it on if they're a good player. they If they're a, a mediocre player, they'll probably turn it on before they absolutely have to have it on and they could waste some of their time, but a good player is going to do exactly what I did. Hey, you're body spotted. I don't need to do anything. And then the second you leave the detection, I'm going to use radar. It's a win-win. So, team's done a good job here. It seems like this is a primary flank. We could push forward. Every DD on this flank is dead. The only ones up are on the eastern flank. So, I should be able to get in position to send torpedoes. Now, I read the comments. Oh, God, not sir. How did you miss that guy? It's a... I agree... I expected him to push... Hey, look, how many times do you see a battleship go down the center? Two battleships. I figured they were just going to push forward and maybe meet up with their teammates that were on the east side in that game. In this game, it looks like the Tirpitz wants to go for that little alcove, and I send my torpedoes accordingly. Now, I'm going to clip a little bit of the island, unfortunately. Should have done a better job with it. But I'm going to send my torpedoes to that spot that it looks like he wants to set up. Is it going to succeed? I don't know. We are in the process of zooming in on it. By the way, I answer this question like every single video. and It's fine. I don't mind. I, I'm probably more active with the zooming in on the object as it's going towards the target. I'm pressing Z or Z and I cycle with C. And it works out. And we got three torpedoes. We took them out. He, there's nothing to do. So we've got the enemy Kutuzev. I'm trying to keep him spotted so my teammates can fire on him. Clearly his smoke is not available. 
and there are a couple enemy cruisers to the south. Torpedoes are still rearm. I ooh, he took a big shot. Torpedoes are still rearming, and I don't have smoke. If I had smoke, I would be sitting in smoke, firing on the target. I can't do that, so I have to change my strategy. Which would be make sure that we win this flank, maybe address the enemy flank. It looks like a couple of them are coming back towards their their southern spawn. If they end up doing that, you know, that's cool. Enemy battleship, he's sort of bow on backing up. Not really a viable strategy. Ooh. Chapayev thought he was going down the center. Not really going to work out. Edinburgh just ate him up. But yeah, this enemy battleship bow on backing up. That strat is basically dead. People actually switch to HE now. Yeah, can't really get by by that. So I expect him to try and sail forward. And it does look like he's doing that. So I'm going to try and lead him in the direction. I don't think he's going to move forward too fast. But I think he is going to move forward. And I just send my torpedoes, right? I got a friendly really close to me, by the way. I, I didn't really feel that he was that close. I hope I didn't startle him with my torpedoes. And I want to make sure that I'm not detected. A different strategy would require a different set of variables. But here, you know... Hindenburg's moving outside of range. Probably should move outside of the Hindenburg's range. I'm going to be completely honest and fire on this guy. I also want to try and distract him. I really want those torpedoes to hit. And it looks like maybe two? I think only one actually is going to hit. It will hit in a spot that does cause a flood, which is good. But we are sustaining damage. Now look, there's a Fletcher there too. And the Cyclone just took hold. So... Remember, radar extends your detection range in a cyclone. And I'm going to use it to detect the Fletcher. And I'm going to try and damage him. I'm not going to kill him. Unfortunately, my friendlies cannot see this. I kind of wish there would be some sort of communication that you are the only one who sees this target because you're using radar. But, yeah, I don't know how they would communicate that effectively. Team captures this point. Enemy, half of the enemy is rotating around. I would love to kill this guy in the Hindenburg before his team is able to rotate around and take a point. But, you know, we go at our own pace. And here he comes. Oh, I'm going to drop my speed. Get an overshoot. Works out great. I do try and gain speed back quickly in an effort to turn back and avoid it again and get some distance. I'm going to hold my fire in this... Not really a good reason to fire my guns. I don't do enough damage. And he does a ton. So we disengage successfully. Torpedoes are back up. And I do kind of want to use them. And it looks like a friendly Japanese destroyer is going to use his guns to engage the enemy, Fletcher. Now, I don't know if he's going to win this, but he's going to try. So I'm going to try and help him. I'm like, ah, I wish I wasn't in a position to assist. I don't want him losing this. He has more than enough health, and his rate of fire is pretty impressive. Are there people using some sort of gun rearm build for the Japanese right now? Or is that just the rate of fire they're at right now? Either way, I just need to play more Japanese destroyers. I, I see people go, oh, man, why do you have to be so mean? I know. I love... Japanese destroyers. I love them. At least I used to. I, I love every DD line. It's I'm not being critical to like talk crap to players who enjoy. I just wish they played better. I wish I wish my torpedoes would hit more often. They used to always hit. And then the nerfs came. And look at this. Look at this. Look at this. I remember on stream, I was going, oh, this is going to be tons of damage. We're going to kill him. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That guy did a good job avoiding those torpedoes. And I'm going to borrow the smoke that the friendly put up. Of course. Why not? 
And yeah, friendlies are like, oh, those torpedoes look good. Not quite. Yeah. And we've got about 45 seconds left of smoke. But there are enemies. Ooh, North Carolina did a good job on the Neptune. There are enemies that are pushing behind us, so I'm going to try and address that. I just felt like the kid was more important. The friendly DD looks like he's pulled an otzer and he's going to die. We know he's going to die. Unfortunately, he's going to die. And I'm not going to be able to help. I can't see him. I'm just outside of my detection. Radar completely gone. So, yeah, we got a little bit of damage on the kid before he drops off. So, still an incredibly close game. We do have an advantage. We don't want to lose that advantage. My torpedoes are completely, completely useless against the kid. So I'm not going to send them towards the kid. I don't want him to have a clue where I am. I'm going to just sail to his flank and hopefully have a complete ambush on him. Friendly sent torpedoes, and hopefully the torpedoes hit. And the knowledge that the kid only has one torpedo launcher is awesome. He can't do anything. He, he has to fight me straight up with guns. And yeah, he's got more health, but I think I've got the skill to fight him out. But he's taken out by the torpedoes. Good job. Now there's a friendly capturing the north point. And the Amagi was undetected until just now. So that's why I was with my cursor indicating where I think the enemy could be. And that's exactly where he was. He literally was right in front of us the entire time, waiting to take torpedoes. And his guns are in a very awkward position for him. They're on the other side of a ship. Japanese guns have terrible, notorious turret traverse. So I'm gonna get as close as I think is appropriate and I'm gonna send my torpedoes. He does look like he's trying to scrub off some speed, so that's why I sent short with the second set. But I think we've got four beautiful torpedoes that are gonna make full contact, and we take him out. And that game worked out pretty well. Again, it feels like the correct strategy for every Pan-Asian that I've run into is a gun build and it's a bonus if you can hit your torpedoes successfully. You don't want to rely on your torpedoes by improving their rearm cycle and all that stuff. You want to improve your guns. So in a pinch, you can still do some pretty good damage. And if you're lucky, torpedoes will net you 30 or 40,000 on a broadside battleship. And it feels good. I've tried and tried and tried torpedo builds and it just doesn't work for the pan asians they're just too inconsistent you're too reliant on who is in front of you and i don't like that and the enemy hindenburg he thinks i'm in the smoke i am not my friend i am behind it and a pretty good game 107,000 damage eight torpedo strikes three kills a base capture can't complain Radar seemed to... Radar basically gave us two kills. And that's really nice. 2,117 base XP. But I probably could get the same amount of kills as I did in this game with going a smoke build. So it's all the style of the initial encounter. Radar versus smoke. I hope you enjoyed this look at the tier 8. I hope you have a wonderful day. And I'll catch you next time.